for the last week, I've been at the Toronto International Film Festival, using two Sony A7 class cameras to shoot interviews for Tribute Media. This hotel room is our studio. The A7S is the main camera fitted with the FE70-200. It's taking the close-ups of the guests. The second camera is the A7 Model 2 with the FE2470 for its two shots, intros and extras. <laughs> I've done a lot of fine-tuning since we started, so let me share my observations and tips if you're going to be using the A7s in a similar situation. For lighting, I use three Westcott fluorescent heads with soft boxes, about 1,000 watts of illumination on 100 watts of power. We don't want to overheat the room or blow circuit breakers. An Ioniro redhead Chimera rounds out the lighting. Its tungsten lamp is a lower color temperature than the fluorescents. Using the A7S's custom white balance, I balanced at 4100 with one step of magenta shift. I transferred that setting manually to the A7M2. I recorded using XAVCS, 30p at 50 megabits. I needed manual exposure and manual focus to keep them from changing unexpectedly in the middle of a shot. Using the Mode Dial's video mode, I selected manual exposure. Shutter speed of 1 60th for video. I wanted a fairly shallow depth of field and started at f5 with an ISO of 640. That proved to be a little too shallow, so after the first day I went up to 71 and adjusted the ISO to 1200. Using Picture Profile 1, uh, first I reset it to the default. It's worth noting that even if you reset the camera, the picture profile settings are saved until you reset them specifically. For Gamma, Cine 1 which softens the contrast in darker areas and emphasizes gradation in lighter areas. For color mode, still, it's a personal preference, and I turned the detail all the way down. With those settings, the cameras aligned perfectly, enabling me to cut easily right. between the two. Sexy, sexy. And those settings don't require any color grading, an important consideration with the tight schedule. And the images, these are just a few quick samples, turned out nicely. Very happy. Great definition with a soft background. Impressive, considering that we're shooting at f7 in a small space where there's really only about a meter between the subject and the background. Accurate focus isn't easy. The 3-inch LCD can be misleading. Things look like they're in focus, but when viewed on a larger monitor, it's clear they're not. So the larger monitor is very useful. And I find that peaking is not as accurate as I need. According to Peking, both the text of the chair and the text of the step and repeat are in focus, which is misleading. Making small adjustments on a focus-by-wire lens, as both of these are, is less than ideal. The lenses do both support back focus, by which I mean you can zoom in, focus, and then maintain focus throughout the zoom range. I did find that on the 24-70, where the zoom and focus rings touch, I needed to be careful not to nudge the focus while adjusting the zoom. I was worried about camera overheating, so took the precaution of shooting with the battery and card doors open and the monitor extended, and that was probably unnecessary. Even for recordings that ran 25 minutes, I never once saw the overheating warning. I had two batteries for each, and although they ran down quickly, more quickly on the A7S than the A7M2, there was lots of swapping, but I didn't run out of juice during our hectic schedule. Many of the filmmakers interviewed did notice and comment on the Sony A7 cameras all positively. These are new tools and they're excited to see others using them, they want to know more about them, and they're interested in incorporating them into their workflows. One last thing, audio. I used an external mixer recorder, the Tascam DR70D, which has four XLR inputs, to which I connected three Sony ECM44 hardwired lavalier mics. Output to the camera through the mini plug audio connector, there's no issue with the internal audio recordings, but the dual system is better quality. Probably due to several factors, my recommendation is to use outboard dual recording when you can. Over nine days, we shot more than 70 interviews. This was a hard-working, high-pressure shoot with little room for error. I'm happy with the results, but I'm now anxious to try Sony's new FE28-135 lens, which may be more suitable for this kind of video production.